Hallelujah, hallelujah. Pastor Edward here with the Refiner's Fire. Hallelujah. We are in a position to see success manifest. God is continuing to work on our behalf. God is continuing to move the kingdom forward. Uh, God has chosen you and I uh, to do a mighty work in the land so that his glory can be seen. Hallelujah. Despite what it looks like in the world, God is still in control. No matter what we see uh, if with our physical eye, God is still moving. God is still doing the miraculous. God is still working it all out. God causes things to work out for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. God is looking at you. He's working in your life. Even when it's all crazy and haywire, things are, are, don't look like you think they should. God is still working it all out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God for what he's doing in your life. And I thank God for how he's continuing to move. And I thank God that you have shown up to hear the word that God has for you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is continuing to have us identify through the refining process and the purification process. He is continuing to lead us in the path of success. God desires that you have success in every area of your life. You are good enough to receive them. Continue to walk out his plan according to his purpose. Continue to allow him to refine you and purify you. Continue to allow him to shed off that old man so that the new man can walk in victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is releasing uh, greatness upon you. And you just have to hold on to it. Faith without works is dead. God wants you to not only have faith, he wants you to walk in it. He wants you to believe uh, that it's going to come to pass, that it's already done, that you walk as if it's already done because it is. In eternity, he already sees it. We are the only ones uh, dealing with time. Time is a vehicle to get us uh, to that position in eternity. God says, I see it already done in your life. Now walk it out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This lesson today is furtherance of identification. God desires that we identify his mind concerning every matter. When we allow God to move and build, uh, he will establish his plans uh, to perfection, to greatness, greater than we can ever ask or think of. God is a God who can do the turn the impossible into the possible. Hallelujah. He's above all things. Hallelujah. He can't be boxed in. So there's nothing too great for him to do. Hallelujah. And he's continuing uh, to do it for you. Uh, uh, don't look at it with your earthly eyes. Uh, hear what God is saying in the spirit. Hear what God is doing in the spirit. Uh, know him for yourself so he can show you. No matter what we do, we must identify God's mind in every matter. And one of the scriptures demonstrates the fullness of it. Uh, when Jesus was talking to Peter and the disciples, he said, On this rock I shall build my church, and the gates of Hades, the gates of hell, shall not prevail against it. Only what he builds, the gates of hell, cannot prevail against it. Even though the gates of hell, even though the devil may try uh, he cannot move what God is doing. He cannot change what God has put in place. He cannot uh, uh, dissuade us if we hold fast to him. God is showing us the way. He's showing us the path forward. And we must choose him and allow him to build. Allow him to build. Because man can build and it shall fall. Uh, but God building nothing. Nothing, not even the gates of hell, can prevail against it. 
So in this season of identification, we must understand what God is saying. Because when God tells us what it is and we move according to what God says, uh, nothing shall crumble. And all we should see is victory. God's kingdom is moving forward. And God chose you to be a vessel uh, to make it happen. Though that God's glory can be seen in every action and every choice that you make. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's glory will be seen. Esther 4 and 14 says, oh, what better time than now for you to do it? If you don't do it, there will be consequences and I'll raise up another. But he's chosen you. Have you chosen to walk the path? You know, have you chosen to walk in the direction that he has placed you in? Uh, uh, the, the direction that he has told you to go. Are you ready to fully choose him? Don't be lukewarm. Uh, be uh, decisive. Hallelujah. Make your decision. Hallelujah. So today in the identification process where God is telling us what to do, he says, I need you to identify which way to go uh, when you hit the fork in the road. Hallelujah. Let's go into prayer. In the mighty matchless name of Jesus. Lord, we extol you. We lift you up. We glorify you. We magnify your holy name. Lord, you and you alone are worthy. You and you alone have the victory. Oh, we believe that attached to you, we inherit, inherit every victory. We are heirs to the throne. We have been given the authority to walk this earth and take dominion for you. Hallelujah. Thank you for entrusting us with your plans. Thank you for entrusting us with your purpose. Thank you for entrusting us with our assignment. Thank you for entrusting us. Hallelujah. We come humbly before you to give you thanks. We come humbly before you to give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we go forth with this word, decrease me and allow your word to go forth unhindered. Hallelujah. That all distractions are removed. That you are seen in this word. Uh, that your glory is shine, shown. Uh, that the, 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 hallelujah, that the work that the word is called to do uh, comes to pass. We believe that it's going to do the very thing that it is called to do and we're walking it out in faith. We're believing it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In your mighty matchless name, Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. The subject of this lesson today is identify uh, the forks in the road. Uh, they are crucial decision-making moments. Uh, everyone has them. When we come to a fork in the road, what choice are you making? Uh, when we look through the Bible, uh, every person in the Bible that was moving in a divine nature had a choice to make. They had a fork in the road and had to decide which way to go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, when we look at it from a broader scale, it doesn't matter who you are. We all have a choice to make. Do we go left or do we go right? Do we choose God or do we choose uh, anything else? Do we choose God's will or we do we choose our way or other men's way? Do we choose God and his way and his path forward or we do we choose uh, the wrong way? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we look at uh, a purpose, uh, we understand that a purposeful purpose always has crucial decision making moments. David had them. Hallelujah. Saul, King Saul had them. Saul once Paul, I mean, once Paul, once Saul had them. Everyone in the Bible has crucial decision making moments. Hallelujah. Even Jesus had a crucial decision-making moment. He had multiple, even while he was on the cross. Uh, should he go towards the way of the cross or should he not? He chose to die on the cross for our sins. When we look at Jesus on the cross, hallelujah, he could have chosen to call down the forces of heaven, but he chose to complete the plan. He could chose to complete the uh, the prescription. He chose to complete the purpose that was laid before him. 
And because he chose to complete the purpose, we have access to everlasting life. Hallelujah. Uh, same with us. God has placed us into a divine role and people are dependent upon the choices that we make. Hallelujah. When we look at a fork in the road, the definition is clearly a junction in which one road becomes two divergent roads. What, what does that mean? Where uh, we see it when we're driving down the road. You come to a fork in the road and as you come to it, you're on one path and you have to choose. Do I go left or do I right? Go right. Uh, uh, there could be multiple roads. Uh, do I go left or do I go straight or do I go right? At the fork in the road, we must make a decision uh, on which way to go and the the direction we go, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. The direction that we go charts the course for the next path. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What does divergent mean? Divergent is moving or extending in different directions from a common point. Hallelujah. As we go down this road, God places us on a path, and then we have to choose, do we go left or do we go right? How do we know which way to go? It's the word of God. Hallelujah. In Hebrews 5, it says, The wise, the mature, put the word of God into practice so they can discern, distinguish between evil and evil and good, good and evil. The real and the fake, the real and the counterfeit, the real and the look-alike. Uh, uh, at what point do we choose God? At what point do we choose God's way? At what point? It's at every fork in the road. Hallelujah. 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 When we look at it metaphorically, we see that a fork in the road is a deciding moment in life or history when a major choice of options is required. Which way will you choose? Choose ye this day. And how do you choose it? Uh, we already discussed in Hebrews 5 that uh, we must put the word of God into practice. Uh, uh, but let's go further. In Psalms 119, 105, it says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Uh, what God speaks to us through the scriptures and through direct relationship with him, uh, what he speaks to us, the word and the uh, spirit shall agree. We must test all things and hold fast to what is good and true. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Allow the word of God to lead you forward. Allow the word of God to take you down the right path. Allow the word of God to be revealed in you so you know which way to go concerning the mind of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we look at Joseph, even throughout his story, he had choices to make. He was part of issues and situations. In Genesis 37, it gives the, starts with giving the story about Joseph and how he had a dream about them. In the dream, he gave them the in, uh, information. And based off of the dream, they began, began to be jealous of Joseph. To the point that they... Look out! Look for his demise. Reuben was there, and while his brothers were planning and plotting to kill him, he stepped in and he said, "Oh, let's not do this. Let's just place him in the pit." And he had the intention to come back. This is uh, thirty-seven twenty-one through twenty-two. It says, "But Reuben heard this and rescued him out of the hands by saying, let 'Let's not take his life.'" Then Reuben said to them, "Shed no blood. Throw him into this pit." that is in the wilderness, but do not lay a hand on him. The reason why it was so later he might come and rescue him out of their hands to return him to his father. Hallelujah. When Reuben came forward, uh, 39, uh, 37 and 29, it says, Now Reuben returned to the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit, so he tore his garments. Uh, see, many of us have delayed the action that we must take in the moment. 
Well, we know the story that Joseph became, in essence, ruler over all of Egypt. Hallelujah. There was a plan that went forth and a direction that went forth. Reuben, in this moment, didn't necessarily understand the mind of God. Because God had a bigger purpose connected to Joseph. And that purpose was to be the answer. But in our moments of movements, we don't always understand what God is doing. And Reuben didn't come and connect with God to get that answer. But even us, as we move forward, do we always reach out to God and find out his mind concerning the matter? We don't always, and, and we should. God is calling us in every circumstance, every situation, every moment to identify his mind concerning the matter. And when we move forward, we would be able to move forward as he do, He expects so that his purpose is uh, comes forth. God's plan will not be hindered. But even in the moment that God has called us to do something, uh, many of us uh, have toiled obedience is better than sacrifice. When God tells us to do something, we must move according to his will, according to his way, at the time that he calls us to do it, because it's part of a plan and part of a process. And in Reuben's case, uh, uh, could he have saved uh, uh, Joseph from the pit? We don't know. It doesn't tell us, but it's resembling some of the decisions that we've made. But remember, no matter what the plan was, uh, Romans 8 and 28, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. So no matter what anyone with bad intentions has against us, God can and he does cause uh, all things to work out for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Uh, Joseph's path was pl pl uh, already tracked out. Uh, in eternity, God knew what was going to happen. Uh, but God took the situation he was in, in the pit that his family members, that people close to him, uh, placed him in and turned it and caused it to work out for his good. But where is Joseph's determining matter or his choice at his fork in the road we'll get to that uh, let's keep going let's understand that when we follow God's will and God's way God will turn it out for our benefit and for our good and, and he will do greater than we can even ask for or think of when we look at Joseph uh, Joseph had a vision interpretation that was extremely accurate and Pharaoh promoted him. When we look in, uh, hallelujah, Genesis 41, we can look through Genesis 41, 36 through 46, or even the whole chapter to get a full understanding. But what we understand is when Joseph interpreted the dream that there would be famine, uh, uh, Joseph, the plan was put in place on what to do, and Pharaoh required of Joseph to lead the way. Uh, what, what am I saying? 38. Then Pharaoh said to his servants, can we find a man like this in whom there is a divine spirit? So Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has informed you of all of this, there is no one as discerning and wise as you are. You shall be in charge of my house and all my people shall be obedient to you. Only regarding the throne will I be greater than you. Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have placed you over all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took off his signet ring from his hand and put it on Joseph's hand and clothed him in garments of fine linen and put the gold necklace around his neck. And he made him ride. He had him ride in his second chariot and they proclaimed ahead of him, bow the knee. And he placed him over all the land of Egypt. Moreover, Pharaoh said to Joseph, though I am Pharaoh, yet without your permission, no one shall raise his hand or foot in all of the land of Egypt. God is calling us to be the answer. When Joseph was in the pit, could he have imagined that he would be in this position? When Joseph was in the pit that his brothers placed him in, would he become the answer? 
God is calling us to be the answer and that requires us to understand his mind considering consider concerning every matter hallelujah if Joseph went to the many different places he was in and he ran away, would he be in position uh, to have uh, the victory? Would he be in position to receive the blessings of God? Would he have been in position despite everything he was going through if he had just ran away uh, before it was time to see the fullness of God's manifestations in his life? Would he have been the answer for all of Egypt? Would he have been promoted uh, to the high of high? Hallelujah. Would he have, would he have ascended oh hallelujah hallelujah we must understand the mind of God concerning every matter so we know what to do see what we find is uh, those who meant harm for him God turned it around for their good even people who are close to us can do harm to us so we must identify who they are hallelujah we must identify exactly who people are coming to help us. Not everybody is meant to help us. Ezra 4, 1 through 4, it says, Now when the enemies of Judah and Benjamin heard that the people of uh, the exile were building a temple to the Lord God of Israel, they approached uh, Zerubbabel and the heads of their father's households and said to them, Let us build with you, for like you we seek your God. And we have been sacrificing to him since the days of uh, the king of Assyria, who brought us uh, uh, up here. But Zerubbabel and Jeshua and the rest of the heads of the father's household of Israel said to them, You have nothing in common with us in building a house to our God, but we ourselves will together build for the Lord God of Israel, just as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, had commanded us. Then the people of the land discouraged the people of Judah and frightened them from building. I, I need you to understand there are people who may come into your life uh, that mean you no good. Uh, we have to understand their purpose. We understand the purpose of uh, the family connected to Joseph. We understand the family, uh, the purpose of, when we understand the purpose of the enemies of Judah and Benjamin, we understand that they were able to discern the spirits of those folks. And when they discerned the spirits of those folks, they said, no, that was a fork in the road. They could have let them participate and then it wouldn't have been what God expected. But they were able to discern their spirit and understand the purpose. They identified the purpose, identified their spirit, and they said, no, we have to understand. We can't just say yes to everyone. We need to identify God's mind concerning every matter, uh, uh, concerning every person, consider concerning everything that must uh, that uh, has their hand uh, or ability to uh, have their hand in God's purposes. Uh, and there are some people we just have to say no to and be OK with it, because uh, what happens when you say no to the wrong people? Uh, they come up against you when you say uh, no to to the right people, uh, they continue to figure out how they're going to support. Uh, we have to understand that if they're coming in the wrong spirit, they're not supposed to come there. Let your yes be yes and your no's be no. Anything else comes from the evil one. Uh, if someone tells you no, they will uh, uh, tell someone wicked no, they act out and they cause issues. That was a determining factor. Uh, God was able to speak to them in a way. They were able to identify God's mind concerning the matter, their spirit, and, and so on and so forth and say no. Hallelujah. Many times in our lives, we have to understand we just don't come to one folk in the road. We come to many folks in the road. And, and, and the enemies hindered their work. Uh, they hindered their work in that moment. They came up against them and they went to the king and they did all this other stuff. Uh, but what we find is later, there was another folk in the road uh, of five and one through two. It says, uh, Ezra, still, uh, when the prophets, ha when the prophets, Haggai, the prophet, and Zechariah, the son of uh, Edo, prophesied to the Jews who were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel who was over them. Then uh, Zerubbabel, the son of uh, Shealtiel, and Jeshua, the son of Josedek, rose up and began to rebuild the house of God in Jerusalem, and the prophets of God were with them, supporting them. Understand, there are moments that we will defy man for the will of God. They knew to move forward because they identified the mind of God. That's why we must have an Exodus 33, 11 type relationship with God because God will speak to us. Uh, Moses had a relationship with God that they could have conversations as friends would. 
God spoke to him clearly. God will speak to you clearly with the type of relationship that you build with him. He will speak to you in alignment with that. Get close to God. Get a face, friend uh, type relationship, a face to face where you can have face to face conversations with God. So you know what to do because when you come to these forks in the road, you can understand what God is telling you to do in that moment. They had stopped for a while. But then it came to a moment that he said, I'm going forth because that is God's mind concerning the matter. We must understand when to stop and when to keep going. And, and God was able to set the, uh, the pace forward because he had already set it in order in Ezra 1 where he placed it on King Cyrus in his spirit to not only proclaim it against the land, he uh, wrote it down on paper. So when the next king came up and said, why do you continue even though I told you to stop? They said, it's already written. We come to folks in the road, and if we don't understand the mind of God, we won't move in co confidence. We won't move as God has demanded. We won't move as God has said, and so therefore we might get discouraged, and we might not do what God expected. We might uh, allow man's way to lead us, such as the old man and the uh, the old prophet and the new prophet, uh, young prophet, old prophet and the young prophet. We got to do what God says to do, and we must understand and identify it. Uh, let's go forward. Uh, we're about to close here. Uh, when we look at Acts 16, 25 through 34, uh, it says, now about midnight, Paul and Silas were praising and singing hymns of praise to God and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were unfastened. They could have left at that time, uh, uh, but they didn't. When the jailer awoke and saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself thinking that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul called out with a loud voice saying, do not harm yourself for we are all here. Uh, Paul and the, the they and the, uh, Silas as, as well as all the prisoners, they stayed. Uh, Paul was I, able to identify just because that door was open, uh, it wasn't the time for me to walk through that door. It wasn't the time for him to walk through the door till after the jailer had woken up. Uh, the purpose uh, was for them to save, hallelujah, the jailer as well as his entire household uh, 31 they said believe in Jesus uh, the Lord Jesus and you will be saved in your house uh, you and your household and they spoke the word of God to him together with all who were in the house and he took them <coughs> that very hour of the night and washed their wounds and immediately he was baptized he and all his household and he brought them into his house and set food before them and was overjoyed since he had become a believer in God together with his whole household. Uh, God uh, will open doors, but do we have we identified God's mind on the matter, or are we seeing the open door and just running through it? If they had just run through it, they would have missed the opportunity for purpose. Hallelujah. 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 Let's look at the, let's go back to jo Joseph. Joseph was able to interpret James, but let's look here. Uh, jo uh, Genesis 35, 5 through 11. Then Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. He said to them, please listen to this dream which I have had. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and behold, my sheaves stood up and also remained standing. And behold, your sheaves gathered around and bowed to my sheep. Then his brother said to him, are you actually going to reign over us or are you really going to rule over us? So they hated him even the more for his dreams and for his word. Nine, when he had yet another dream and informed his brothers of it and said, behold, I have yet had yet another dream and behold, the sun and the moon and 11 stars were bowing down to me. And he also told it to his father as well as to his brothers. And his father rebuked him and said to him, what is this dream that you have had? Am I and your mother and your brothers actually going to come to bow down to the ground before you? And his brothers were jealous of him, but his fathers kept uh, the matter in mind. Understand that Joseph in this moment did not interpret the dream. Uh, Joseph's brothers and fathers and mother, they all interpreted the dream. Uh, just because people around you have a gift doesn't mean uh, they're on the divine course that you are on. Understand uh, that we must discern between who's of God and who is not of God. Even in our own household. Let's go further. Uh, it says uh, uh, Genesis 42 and 
28, but Joseph had recognized his brothers, although they did not recognize him. Understand that when Joseph was placed in the position over all of Egypt because of the famine, every area had to come to Joseph to get food, even Joseph's brothers as well as his father and so on and so forth so they could be fed. Joseph recognized them and had a fork in the road moment to determine should I have them killed or should I uh, feed them? Should I have them feed, uh, killed or shall I uh, embarrass them? And he chose not to. Instead, he chose uh, to cover them. Hallelujah. What are you doing at your fork in the road? Understand what God has called you to and called you for. Uh, not all bad people or people who are outside the will of God um, have to be uh, beaten down and, and killed and exposed for who they are. Uh, their convictions will uh, call, uh, just when you have to expose who you are, their convictions will, uh, it will cause them to be convicted. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, Joseph did not have to convict them. Uh, they convicted themselves when he exposed who God, uh, who he was. Hallelujah. 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 His vision came to pass. But remember, uh, uh, discern uh, giftings and callings are irrevocable or without repentance. They, uh, just because uh, you have a gifting does not make you a child of God until you choose him. And those around you can deceive you if you aren't able to discern the spirit. So don't worry. Of, don't look on the outward appearance of man. Look on the inward spirit. The, search the heart and examine the mind like God. God does. I mean, having a relationship with God will allow you to identify God's mind on the matter and he will reveal to you the spirit of these people and you will know which direction to go. Uh, not everyone hallelujah. If you look in Ezra they told them no. Hallelujah. Uh, but Joseph, uh, these wicked brothers he had, he fed them. Some people we are called to cover hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some people uh, who are wicked, uh, they may have an opportunity to turn over and we're not to uh, expose them. Let God convict them. Uh, let uh, our uh, reveal of who we are convict them for their actions. We don't always have to come up and beat someone over the head. Just understand what God is calling for. Understand. And the only way we will know is if we identify God's mind on the matter. Uh, what are you to do at the fork in the road? What are you to do when God says move forward? Are you going, you see, many of us would be like, I'm going to expose my brothers and sisters for the craziness they're doing. Um, sometimes we have to sit back uh, and wait and allow God to position us uh, so that our very presence will expose. There will be exposure. Hallelujah. But what are you doing? If he had held on the entire time, uh, if he had held a grudge the entire time, he may not have uh, elevated to the height that he was destined to go. If he had figured a way to run away from the course of action that God had placed on the direction that God had told him to go uh, he may not have been the in the position uh, that he needed to be in uh, see see let me let me give you another idea and understanding when Joseph was in position because he was able to feed his brothers and his mother he was able one we said covering uh, but he was able to uh, save them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If Paul and Silas had walked through the door before it was time to walk through the door, oh, they wouldn't have had the opportunity to save the jailer and his family. Oh, we got to move on purpose, not on emotions. Oh, we got to put purpose over personal. We have to identify God's mind concerning every matter, and then we will see success. Then... Along the way, God's going to give us so much success. But God is placing us in a position greater that will... Hallelujah. 
these victories that God has stored up for us. He wants to give it to us. But we have to be willing to walk the path he has set in front of us, even if it doesn't feel like it should be easy. Be content with where God has placed you because it's for a greater purpose. Have a relationship with God so that he can reveal the fullness. Hallelujah. In the mighty matchless name of Jesus, we thank you for this word that you have given. And we are sure that the word is going out to do the very thing that it was called to do. We will identify your mind on every matter so we know exactly what to do, where to go, how to how to handle situations, who to say yes to, who to say no to, who to wait uh, for, who to uh, wait in line, who where to go, which direction to go, left or right. Well, we will stand. In alignment with you, we'll set our will up down and we'll move forward in yours. In your mighty matchless name, thank you for this word. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for showing us the way. Thank you for continuing to be an ever-present God and intentional in our lives. Hallelujah. In your mighty matchless name, Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.